Hey everybody, it's CJ. Um, so today uh, we're going to be covering the Rebel Aces. We covered Imperial Aces in our last segment. And Rebel Aces, even though it's like a couple releases off, it seems like a good place to go after that. Now, with the Rebel Aces pack, you actually get two, uh, two ships. You get a B-Wing and an A-Wing. Uh, the B-Wing is painted up in Dagger Squadron colors, I believe, and the A-Wing is painted up based off the concept art by Ma Ralph McQuarrie. Um, so, you know, those are the two, uh, those are the two ships that you get with this, and we're going to have to do this a little bit split up, so we're going to do an A-Wing section and a B-Wing section, and the mods and, and upgrades relevant to them. Uh, so let's go ahead, and we're going to start with the A-Wing section here. Um, the first one you get here is Prototype Pilot. Uh, prototype Pilot gives us our baseline. Uh, pilot Skill 1, 2 Attack, 3 Evade, 2 Hull, and 2 Shields. Um, has the Focus, Target Lock, Boost, and Evade actions. Has a Missile Slot, and comes in at 17 points. Uh, a quick little divergence here. Um, You'll notice this one comes with the, the lowest pilot skill pilot, whereas the TIE Interceptor Aces, uh, the Imperial Aces, didn't. Um, I think Fantasy Flight had learned their lesson, as it were, and that's why you see this here. Um, now this is the card, though, that shares its paint scheme with the, uh, the ship that comes with this pack, and they actually did a really good job recreating um, the paint scheme based off of the art. Um, but yeah, this is your standard prototype pilot. You don't see him that much. He's a great blocker, but other than that, not much. Um, then you have your green, green. You have your green squadron pilot. Um, the green squadron pilot is pilot skill three. Two attack, three evade, two haul, two shields. All the same actions. Um, he has, in his upgrade slot, he gains an Elite Pilot Talent upgrade slot, and he comes in at 19 points. Um, really good missile carrier, push, push the limit with a missile on him, like a Proton Rocket, which we'll get into in this section, or in this, in the A-Wing section here. Really, really good. Um, you can give him two EPTs with something that comes in this. Once again, really, really good. 19 points. He's not badly costed. He's not great. Um, but yeah, so those are our two generic pilots for the A-Wing. Um, then we're going to get into our name pilots. You get two name pilots in this for the A-Wing. Uh, the first one is Gemmer Sojan. Gemmer is pilot skill 5, has the standard stat line. Um, standard action bar has a missile as an upgrade slot comes in at 22 points Gemmer's ability is while you are at range 1 of at least one enemy ship, increase your agility value by 1 um, Gemmer is really good actually uh, because Gemmer can slip in and stay in a furball and it's like you're shooting at a excuse me it's like you're shooting at him at range 3. Um, so, yeah, he's really good. Um, really survivable. And you put, once again, you put proton rockets on him. And you, you know, you get in range 1, get in the furball, and you just evaporate something on one of your turns. Um, after Gemmer, we have Jake. Uh, Jake is by far the best pilot that I've seen out of here. Um, Jake is pilot skill 7, standard stat line, standard action bar. He has a elite, excuse me, he has an elite pilot talent and a missile slot. Comes in at 24 points. After you perform a focus action or are assigned a focus token, you may perform a free boost or barrel roll action. Okay. So, um, Jake is the most maneuverable ship in the game except the Phantom. Um, because you can put push limit on Jake. You take a focus. 
You now barrel roll. You push the limit into boost. Um, somebody hands you a focus. You do a barrel roll. Push the limit into boost. Um, or because of the way it's nested, you boost, focus, barrel roll. Um, or if you have someone who has squad leader. <laughs> I know it's getting weird, but someone with squad leader. Uh, for your first action, you evade. You sit on the evade. Then they give you squad, they, they squad leader him. And now he focuses, and he barrel rolls, then he pushes into boost. Yeah. Really, really maneuverable, really good. Uh, he gets even, and, and we'll go over the dial here, because uh, like I said, we have to break this up. So we're going to go over the A-Wing dial here. His dial, this dial actually it's a lot like the uh, TIE Interceptor dial. Um, your one, your ones, you have white hard turns. Your twos, you have all green, um, too hard, too bank, too straight. Three is white hard, white bank, green straight, red K turn. Four is a green straight, five is a green straight, and a red K turn. Um, you know, really not much to, to go over there. It's a really good dial. Let's you shed stress really easily. Um, but let's go ahead. Excuse me. Uh, let's go ahead and get into the uh, upgrades here. Um, the first of these is a title. And I want to go into the title first because of what it does. It's a zero point title. A wing test pilot. A wing only title. Your upgrade bar gains one elite pilot talent upgrade icon. You cannot equip two of the same elite pilot talent upgrade cards. You cannot equip this card if your pilot skill value is one or lower. Can't put it on the prototype pilot, which ironically enough is the test pilot. Um, but you can give guys that already have one EPT two. You can give guys that don't have any, like Gemmer. An EPT. This is something the TIE Interceptor needs. As you saw in the last video, there's a few TIE Interceptor pilots that just need an EPT. This would fix it. But, yeah. So, problem is it would overfix things like soon tier. The guys that already have the EPTs don't need a second one. The A-Wing was a... The A-Wing had bad stuff happen when it got designed. <laughs> um, it really wasn't that well designed. It, it, I mean, okay, it was okay designed, but it was overcosted, and it really didn't fill a role that needs to be filled. Excuse me. I don't know why I'm yawning so much. Uh, it filled a role that didn't need to be filled in the Rebel Alliance rosters. This turns it into sort of an elite interceptor, which the TIE interceptor already is. Uh, then you have Chardan Refit. This is an A-Wing only upgrade. Uh, it's, it's a missile upgrade. It's negative two points. This was the first, and as far as I know, the only negative point level upgrade in the game. A-Wing only. This card has a negative squad point cost. Takes up your missile slot, adds two points to your squad value, basically. Um, or to your pool of points. So... The reason this came out is because A-Wings, in all honesty, are overpriced by about two points. So Fantasy Flight's fixed to it because they put out the Z-95, which is a missile carrier, was to just pull the missile off the A-Wing, take off the two points for the missile, and call it a day. The A-Wing did not really feel like it lost any utility from it, um, and everybody seemed to go home happy. <laughs> not really much else I can say about that. Uh, but there are some reasons to keep your missiles, such as proton rockets. Um, proton rockets also came out in this pack, and I forgot to mention, all the upgrades in the pack, you have two of them, except for crew, because they're unique, and chart and refit, you get three of instead of two. Alright, I apologize for not covering that at the beginning of the upgrades, but completely forgot. So, proton rockets. 
Uh, proton rockets. They are... Proton rockets are a missile, three points, um, attack value of two, range one. Attack, focus, discard this card to perform this attack. You may roll additional attack dice equal to your agility value to a maximum of three additional dice. Um, so what this allows you to do is to take a... You, know, you, you leave the missile slot on it, you put a proton rocket on it, and now you roll up and you throw five dice from an uh, from a uh, A-wing at close range. It's brutal. Um, especially if you have like a target lock focus or something like that going on. You don't have to spend the focus token to do the attack, so you still sit on the focus. Absolutely brutal. Really good. Um, this card single-handedly makes a green squadron pilot or even a prototype pilot deadly. Like, seriously deadly. Because two of them gang up on one target, drop ten dice on it in a turn. It's usually going to die. Um, let's see, after that we're going to get into the B-Wing here. Now, the B-Wing, um, I'm sure some of you remember it. Some of you probably remember it, some of you probably have not seen my previous videos. Uh, the B-Wing, its baseline pilot is a blue squadron pilot, comes with the pack. Um, pilot skill 2. Three attack, one evade, three hull, five shields. Uh, baseline upgrade bar is a system slot, a cannon, two torpedoes. Baseline, and all of them have the same action bar of focus, target lock, and barrel roll. Um, the blue squadron pilot comes in at 22 points. Really good ship. You see it a lot of times in like five rebel swarms, um, stuff like that. I mean, not too much to say about it. It was part of Biggs Walks the Dog back in the, in, uh, the second World Championship where Paul Heaver took his first win. He was running three of these and, uh, was it three of these with advanced sensors and Biggs? So, you know, it wasn't Blue Squadron, it was Dagger Squadron. Um, I apologize, Dagger Squadron, or Pilot Skill 4, same thing, same upgrade bar, same actions, same stat line. 24 points instead of 22. Yeah, it was three of these and bigs. I apologize. Um, both of them are really good. The blue squadrons, you see those used as like four of those in a Z95 is really popular because it, you know, gives you a hell of a lot of durability um, and a ton of dice to throw down range. Uh, daggers, you don't see them as often as you used to, but they're not that bad. They're 24 points. You can fit four of them in a squad if you feel like it, if you want to, if you want to go for a higher pilot skill bid and drop the Z. Um, you can play a classic Biggs Walks the Dogs and see if it actually doesn't die in the current meta, which it might not. It might do well. I mean, one of the things I've noticed is people abandon builds and they don't ever come back to them. Um, so, yeah, I mean, this, because of the sheer amount of dice it throws out, mind you, bigs would eat it like nobody's business, so you just throw a fourth dagger in there and drop bigs, but yeah, I mean, it's a lot of dice to throw down range. Whether or not you got four Y-Wings pointing at you with, with TLTs, twin laser turrets, big deal, you're going to eat a Y-Wing a turn. They're going to, they're going to do a little bit of damage to your dagger. Your daggers are going to eat a Y-Wing a turn. They're just going to chew it up. Um, so, now we're going to get into the named pilots. Uh, the first of the two named pilots for the B-Wing is Naradantles. Uh, Naradantles is pilot skill 5. 3 attack, 1 evade, 3 hull, 5 shields. Standard action bar. Um, her upgrade bar includes an elite pilot talent. She's 26 points. And her ability is, you can perform torpedo secondary weapon attacks against enemy ships outside your firing arc. Okay, I know what you're thinking. Well, big deal. Torpedoes suck. I don't want to do that. Um, that is until you... There's some stuff that you could actually look at doing here, which is pretty good. Um, and one of them 
I played around with. I've played around with it a few times in casual play, um, and it was before Extra Munitions came out. Now that Extra Munitions is out, Nair's a little bit less pricey. So, uh, the way that it works, you start with Nair Dantles. You add one of the upgrades that are going to come in here. I'm actually going to pull up my squad builder and just throw her together real quick so that way I can make sure I tell you how to build Nera correctly. Uh, well, if you want to build this Nera, um, you start with Nera Dantles. You add the Elite Pilot Talent Deadeye. Yes, Deadeye never gets used, except here. Uh, you then take Torpedo. Now, you can take any Torpedo you like. Personally, I like to throw advanced proton torpedoes on there. They're the most expensive, but they give you the most punch. They're five attack range one. It's basically like a proton rocket. Um, you then take extra munitions. So now you have two of those torpedoes for eight points. So now have four point torpedoes instead of six. Um, you don't take a cannon because that'll just run your price up way too high. You don't take system, uh, but you do take the B-Wing E2 modification, and then you take a, where are you, targeting coordinator, recon specialist, a recon specialist for three points. Um, so now, the way Nero works is you go, you fly around, you do your thing, somebody gets into range one bubble, you are now throwing five dice at them, and it's 360. So, if they're behind you, if they're in front of you, if you have someone come in to make that kill shot on you, you spend a focus to shoot the torpedo at them. You then spend the focus to flip over, because what it does, the advanced proton torpedo flips three blanks to focus results. You're On average, you're going to roll a bunch of focus and a couple hits. You then start flipping over some focus with the other focus token, and yeah it just it gets ugly um next up is kian farlander kian farlander's pilot skill seven same stat line same action bar same upgrade bar um 29 points when attacking you may remove one stress token to change all of your focus results to hit results uh this is really good on Kian with Push the Limit because it lets you do two actions, neither of which are a focus, get a stress, and now you can spend that stress like a focus. Um, usually it's going to be like a target lock and a barrel roll, or if you're crazy enough to throw an engine upgrade on him, making him 33, 36 points before you get to any other upgrades of Push the Limit and engine upgrade. You know. But yeah, um, he's really fun to play with. Really interesting because he does use the stress mechanic against your opponent. So, you know, there is that. Um, also, I want to get into the B-Wing dial. The dial on the B-Wing, it, it's one of the more interesting dials. And this is why Kian does benefit from his ability so much. is because of the dial, it, it has a lot of rep. Uh, in fact, starting at the one speeds, you have one red turns, green banks, green straights. At your two speed, you have two white turn, two white bank, green straight, red K turn. At speed three, your banks are green, white straights, and at speed four, your straight is red. Or your threes are red at, sorry, I think I said green. Your threes are red at three white straight, four red straight. So you have a total of one, two, three, four, five forward going maneuvers that are red on the dial. And your K turn is obviously red too. And it's only a two. Um, so yeah, it's um, it's an interesting dial. It like I said, it benefits, like, Kian Farlander loves that dial because, oh, I need to hard turn one? Great, I have a focus. You know? So, there is that. Um, now, I'm going to go ahead and get into the modifications here. We have the B-Wing E2, which is a modification for the B-Wing. Um, B-Wing only modification. Your upgrade bar gains the crew upgrade icon. It's one point. Um, it's not that... Uh, 
not that expensive, all things being equal. It's paying one point for a, an extra slot on a ship seems to be about what FFG does anyway. And, yeah, I mean, it, it opens up some, some interesting possibilities for the B-Wing. So, you know, we'll, we'll go and use that to segue into our crew. Uh, the first of these is Janors. Um, you remember Jan from the Hawk expansion. Well, this is the Jan crew. Uh, Rebel only. Crew, two points. Once per round, when a friendly ship at range 1 to 3 performs a focus action or would be assigned a focus token, you may assign that ship an evade token instead. Um, this basically gives rebel ships a evade action without having the evade action because they can just opt to flip that over to an evade token from a focus. Um, so it's pretty straightforward. Not too much to remember on it. And I, I actually like it. It's really easy. It's really, it's really straightforward. There's not a lot of clutter in the way that the, the way that it's done. So. Let's see. Next up, we have Kyle Katarn. Um, Kyle is also a Rebel crew member. Three points, Rebel only. After you remove a stress token from your ship, you may assign a focus token to your ship. Um, Kyle Katarn's really good on dash with push the limit because you could push the limit, gain a stress, and then you, when you do your green maneuver, you automatically get a focus, so you do another action instead. Um, makes them very fo very efficient, very easy to use. You could also use him on a YT-1300 with push limit, or on, um, I think where they were looking at was, uh, Kian Farlander. I don't think that'd be, I don't think I'd go that route, but, you know. Um, and then, finally, I want to say this is finally, yep. Finally, we have Enhanced Scopes. Enhanced Scopes is a system slot, one point. During the activation phase, your treat your pilot skill value as zero. Give me one second. Okay. I don't think I've ever seen this used. Um, I'm sure they had some kind of concept of where it would get used, how it would get used, why people would use it uh, when they designed the card. You just don't ever see it. Um, so yeah, that's... You just don't see it. <laughs> I don't know how else to put it. Um, but yeah, other than that, that, that's about it. So that's it for the uh, Rebel Aces. Um, all in all, it's one of the better expansions. If you play Rebels, get it. If you don't play Rebels, it actually isn't that useful. Um, this is one of the expansions where most times... Because you have Proton Rockets, that's about it. But that's going to come out in other stuff. Enhanced scopes, I don't really see that being used by anybody. This is almost straight up just Rebels. Where Imperial Aces, there were some little bits here and there that could be used for the Rebels or for anybody. This one, this is pretty much just a Rebel-only thing. So if you play Imperials, you can ignore this expansion completely. You're not missing anything. If you play Rebels, it's definite pickup. Scum, you can ignore it, not worry about it. Um, but yeah, so that's going to be it for this and, um, until next time, fly casual.